FGI and the HDRC are committed to the completion of a residential safety risk assessment that informs decisions made during the functional programming process. Steve, can you provide an explanation as to the components and also provide examples? The uh, resident safety risk assessment is a really important tool for identifying the operational concerns that can be positively addressed through the design process. So it has different components that have been rolled into one assessment, and it's recommended to use that as an interdisciplinary team in order to complete the evaluation with the ultimate goal of supporting positive resident outcomes. The idea is to provide input on the care population and their needs, to get input from staff and their needs, to look at the other operational influencers that inform the design of a more supportive environment. And we want to focus on not limiting the residents by creating any unnecessary barriers. Utilizing the resident safety risk assessment as part of the programming and planning process is designed to enhance the success of the ultimate built solution. The resident safety risk assessment components include such things as an infection control risk assessment, uh, resident mobility and transfer risk assessment, resident fall risk and prevention, looking at resident dementia and mental health risks, security risks, and even disaster risks and emergency preparedness type issues. Jane, um, maybe you can provide some design examples that support the different components included within the resident safety risk assessment. Sure, Steve, I would love to. So what we see, for example, for infection control is a good example, uh, and we've seen it throughout your community here, is utilizing uh, hard surfaces instead of, say, laminated surfaces or other things, things that are easier to clean. So uh, infection risk really has to do, we know, with hand washing and making that available, as well as being able to have surfaces that can be maintained and, and cleaned well. And so then we couple that with looking at other details, right, like the rounded corners and other things that we've already mentioned. Uh, another part is the mobility and transfer, and I think that this has a lot to do with the accessibility side of not only the space and the clearances, but also things that provide different types of settings for grab bars. Uh, so this has been one of our hot topics uh, for our group, particularly in, in the resident document group, because we've looked at it from the Federal Access Board and ADA perspective, which was never really designed for utilizing with seniors that have lower upper body strength. Uh, it was really designed for people with upper body strength. So another, another issue that we look at a lot is evaluating fall risk. Uh, recently, I was in a community and the uh, person I was walking through said, I, I would like you to look at two flooring surfaces that we have. And I'm like, okay. And so they said, we're trying to decide what the transition strip color should be. And I was like, okay. And so we went and we walked and looked at it and they had one dark side that was the carpet and one really light side that was the other flooring. And somehow they thought they were going to fix the condition by the color of the strip in the middle. So obviously with the darker side, it looked like a hole or a step and it was a transition and they definitely were not I mean, their intention was good. They were trying to solve the problem, but it was too late and they were brand new materials on either side. And so here we had a, a, a transition strip that was not going to make the difference of what they needed to do. So looking at things from a tonal perspective, in terms of materials, um, evaluating that it doesn't, can't be perceived by something else or perceived as a step or a hole. Or... So another area that we looked at with the dementia uh, and mental health risk, we had a group that was a subset of the residential document group that was really focused on not only doing an overlay to give us specific guidance, but they felt that, that a risk assessment was also part of that. Um, so basically any, any type of setting can have someone with dementia in the setting. So as a result, looking at each setting uh, realizing your care population was really important. So utilizing that assessment can look at the care population needs and then relate it to the design of supportive space based on the care population. So that's a lot of what this talks about. It's basically balancing that risk and safety that we talked about earlier uh, in an effort to support residents to be able to, to maximize what they can do and what, to their ability.